Hey everyone, Harry here to talk about Rudy Giuliani's concession that he is a liar and a nasty serial liar at that. All right, this is a defamation suit filed by Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman. Do you remember them perhaps from the January 6th hearing? Two completely uh, innocent, conscientious poll workers who are doing their job and there's a video there and they are doing what is very quickly understood to be uh, a standard kind of maintenance task that Giuliani charges is a gotcha moment of their uh, voter manipulation and throwing out a famous suitcase of ballots. And this wasn't something that he did casually and once. So, for example, the January, excuse me, um, yeah, I think it is January 2nd, 2020, phone call to Brad Raffensperger, the notorious one. Uh, Giuliani invokes their names 18 times, again and again, and the consequences for them are just um, life upending. So they testify in the jet before the January 6th committee of all kinds of intimidation and berating and, uh, you know, just a total kind of torture by Trump MAGA forces down in Georgia, whom Giuliani has revved up into thinking that they are, you know, in on some grand scheme to cheat Trump out of the presidency. And um, it's made pretty clear, it's made quite clear right away that this is totally bogus and it just doesn't stop him. He does it again and again and again. So why would he be copping to the line uh, now? Um, so they sue him for defamation. And um, he's not just, uh, it would appear, not just a liar, but a deadbeat. They, When you sue someone, you get to have certain discovery. You get to get their files. You get to get their emails. You get to depose them. And Giuliani, uh, you know, who who once upon a time was America's mayor and a vaunted and well-respected U.S. attorney, it just acts like a complete deadbeat uh, as well as a liar and basically ignores all his discovery obligations until the judge imposes sanctions uh, because uh, uh, Moss and Freeman have to bring a motion to compel him to to produce discovery, which is supposed to be, you know, just your standard obligation once you're in the the civil system. He just doesn't do it. You know, he is a, a jackass. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe he's too busy flying here and there, but he just doesn't do it and has to be ordered and now owes $89,000. And it's to try to get rid of the $89,000 and only to try to get rid of the $89,000 that he now has um, copped to the lies because his effort here, I, you know, Frank uh, sort of throwing himself on the mercy of the court uh, is to uh, get out from under these sanctions and say, look, I, we don't have to do discovery. You're right. I lied. You're right. It was defamatory. It hurt your reputation. I still have some things, some defenses I can make at trial. I still think maybe it was constitutionally protected. I still want to argue you don't have damages, which in light of the testimony we heard from these two poor women who's, I think, I think one had to move, uh, you know, their lives were completely um, uh, thrown, you know, into, into chaos and, uh, they, they had to be basically, uh, you know, take, take to, uh, a whole new life to get away from the, uh, haranguing of the Trump crowd. It, it would be quite a cheeky defense to try to make, but it's that and only that that causes them to say, okay, I lied. This is why you're trying to get discovery to, to prove I lied. Let's just agree I did and and move forward. So man, oh man, some you know, lying casually, repeatedly, 
in and you know with complete like indifference uh until he has to end combining it with just not living up to his court imposed obligations this is on the one hand a good illustration of you know thank god for the courts that have by and large performed their function and every trump is a classic example but the whole the whole gang of them they they lie with impunity and then it comes to court where you're subject to crimes perjury for starters uh, uh, if you, if you lie and then all of a sudden they change their, their tune. It should be something that's really evident to the whole public now about Giuliani and, and the crowd. But every time it, it's, um, demonstrated, you know, another, another little inch forward for, for truth after the assault on it of the last few years. So what happens to Giuliani now? You know, he, the, he's got these, uh, sanctions and they were because he, they were the Shea and Moss and Ruby Freeman were forced to bring a motion to compel. And these are their lawyers fees. I don't think the lawyer would just say, Oh, it's all right. Don't, don't worry about it. So it, it his effort here does seem to get out from under that, uh, sanction order, but I, I don't know if it'll work. And in any event, so the trial itself now goes in with a, and he's got a tremendous headwind. And Moss and Freeman, a tremendous tailwind. It's exactly like Fox and Dominion, where when pushed to it, Fox had to say, oh, these things we were saying for months and months and months for ratings. Yeah, they were all false. We, we were, we were just completely lying to the, you know, to pander or be, or, or persuade the, uh, the right wing crowd. So the kind of crucible of the courts forced the, the truth out and not just the truth, but the kind of character of uh, someone who is at the very center of the whole post-election uh, scandals. So we'll see what, what happens to him. But it's, you know, it's a really shameful day for a former public uh, servant to to cop to not just lying, but in a really nasty way toward completely innocent victims and doing it again and again and again. We'll see what his efforts to get out from under these uh, the discovery debts, whether they attract any sympathy at all on behalf of the court, but they certainly advance the defamation suit against him. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.